Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Kaiser. I'm the Associate Director of Neurosciences and the Subspecialty Director of Spine Surgery at Valley Hospital. So the field of spine surgery is seen developed in several areas, uh, the most significant of which is our ability to perform minimally invasive spine procedures. These are traditional operations that we perform through smaller incisions with specialized equipment. And this translates into causing less soft tissue trauma, having patients have less post-operative pain, they have shorter hospitalizations, and they recover sooner. These minimally invasive procedures are in part performed through the evolution of image navigation. This is a process in which we can take an instrument held in the surgeon's hands and it's projected onto the real-time imaging of the patient so that we can more accurately implant spinal devices and we can verify the appropriate localization of these devices prior to the patient waking up and leaving the operating room. There are a variety of reasons why a patient may require spine surgery, but the most common reason is degenerative disease of the spine, such as spinal stenosis or a herniated disc, that can cause compression of the spinal cord and nerves and lead to irritation. What happens is the degenerative process can cause pain, just like a joint in the body can produce pain when it becomes arthritic, but at the same time, these degenerative changes can take up the space where the spinal cord and the nerves travel. This can cause irritation to these structures and patients can present with complaints of pain, numbness, or weakness. In this particular case, this patient developed degenerative disease of her neck or the cervical spine. Under these circumstances, the objective of the surgery is twofold. We need to create space for the spinal cord and the nerves so they're no longer irritated. We also have to maintain an environment of the spine so that future injury and pain are avoided. This is where effusion comes into play. We open up the space for the spinal cord and the nerves by removing structural objects of the spine. But we then have to supplement the strength of the spine, and so we place bone grafting material and metallic implants that provide stability and long-term healing of the spine. Patients are typically in the hospital for approximately one or two days. Postoperatively, they may require to wear a collar, but often there's not a lot of pain associated with the procedure because there's not a lot of soft tissue trauma that takes place. Long-term healing, however, involves the bone fusing together as a solid block, and this can take months. One of the last developments in spine surgery has been our ability to assess the patient's outcome more accurately. We do this by utilizing self-assessment questionnaires that the patient fills out so that they can convey their perception of how they're doing as opposed to a clinician subjectively assessing the patient's outcome. All these modalities allow us to best treat our patients and allow them to resume their normal activities and resume their quality of life that they enjoy. We accomplish this by coordinating care across multiple disciplines, including neurosurgery, orthopedics, neurology, rehab medicine, pain management, as well as physical therapy. We couldn't be more excited about the opportunity to work at the New Valley Hospital. We will have access to state-of-the-art technology, but to continue delivering the excellent care our patients deserve in the warm and friendly environment, which is the culture of Valley Hospital.